Welcome, one and all, to the Lame Design Conference, where in each edition my esteemed guest and I will take turns in attempting to pitch the worst possible video game to you, the fans at home, whilst a professional graphic designer and artist illustrates said pitches over our inane ramblings. The contestant who can pitch the stupider, more diabolically unenjoyable game will be crowned the winner by you, the audience, via a poll that will be linked in this video's pinned comment and active for a week after the video is release. If the winner is my guest, they'll be placed into the Hall of Lame at the end of the following episode. And if the winner is me, I'll go out and buy myself a milkshake and look very smug about it. Let's meet today's contestant. Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Lame Design Conference. I am your host as ever, Fudge. This is the show where my guest and I will take it in turns pitching the worst possible game we can possibly imagine. And then you, our adoring fans at home, get to decide who picked the worst game and if my guest goes into the Hall of Lame and if you upset me for at least the next month and I feel incredibly betrayed. Today, I am joined by Voidburger, aka Jess, aka VB, aka another nickname that I haven't uh, passed on you that I'm going to ask you to come uh, up with right Void now. Void is fine. Yeah, Void, Void is good. <laughs> also, Bergy, I've heard that you're a big fan of. Home good. Slice. <laughs> big Dog. <laughs> mm, I don't know about Big Dog. I don't know if it fits me. <laughs> um, so uh, you were uh, the video producer at Giant Blum until some anonymous suit decided that they knew better and uh, you, you fell victim to the crushing ways of capitalism. Oh, the industry. Mm -hmm. It got me. <laughs> and now you've struck out on your own and you're doing uh, Let's Plays and stuff like that, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was doing Let's Plays to begin with for... God, over a decade. Jeez, I feel old. Uh, but yeah, back to like streaming and goofing off and being on podcasts and shows like this. And yeah, you know, just uh, it feels like I'm on like a sabbatical or something. It's kind of how I'm kind of treating this unemployment right now. <laughs> how do you feel about Let's Plays in like the modern day? Like it feels like they've kind of gone the way of the dodo, right? With Twitch, yeah, and you know, like yeah, you know, the thing is exactly like Twitch streaming just completely overrode that thing. And also, like, you know, something awful, which is where like you know, Let's Play allegedly started uh had like really lofty standards for everything and it was like oh we're better than everyone else and you have to do certain things it has to be a certain amount of quality and then like youtube got even bigger and then streaming happened and it's just like oh the quality doesn't really matter it matters is like your charisma and how funny you are with yeah. the chat and that's like really that's that's the only part you really need to worry about thank god yet. twitch has come along with its complete lack of quality control <laughs> yeah right great <laughs> so we'll get on with the show um but not before, a fun fact about yourself. Can I pester you about a fun fact about yourself, Jess? Yes, my fun fact is not really about me, but it's just about reality. The 1993 yeah, Super Mario, Mario Brothers, Brothers movie is way better than the current one that just came out, like, last week. It's so she much just better. saw it last night, and I'm seeing it tomorrow now, and now I'm really concerned. Enjoy! <laughs> the general consensus is that I've heard that DK is lame, and people don't like the bit where Luigi and Bowser tongue kiss for 30 seconds straight, which yeah, I find I like that part. I, yeah. I like that part. I thought that part was like really touching. So I don't know. Whatever. People are artless. I would be aroused. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go on with the show. Uh, usually, uh, I do have the guest start first, but since we're pretty early days, I will allow you to veto that and make me start first if you want to get a bit more of a feel. Uh, but also, if you're confident, uh, you can go ahead and, and start. Oh, should we flip a coin? I really have no opinion. Either sure, way. I don't have a coin handy because I'm broke. Uh, we could play rock paper scissors over video call right now. <laughs> okay, let's Would do that it. Would that work? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do it. we'll do it on, on. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, first of all, like people do it different in different cultures. We do like rock paper scissors shoot. Yeah, I think your culture's different? dumb, so we're not doing that. We'll just do rock paper scissors. I think Americans okay, are that... inferior to me, and I've decided. And then like just on rock, on scissors, you throw the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Which is okay. great because it allows for psychological mix ups. Because in, in their head, they're thinking when they say scissors, they'll do scissors, and then you do paper, which mm -hmm. beats rock, which they use in right, the right. scissors. Mm -hmm. Now you Strategy. think they'll do paper, so I've already won the metal game. Mm -hmm. Rock, paper, scissors. I wasn't rock, thinking at all. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> 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 you win, you pick. I got it. I'll just go first. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Great. I never win rock, paper, scissors. I just go you like head empty. To get this far. Head empty, no thoughts. I'll just do a <laughs> random thing and it worked. So, yeah. um, as people might know, um, I'm a huge uh, Silent Hill idiot. Have been for, I don't know, when did Silent Hill 2, when did I play Silent Hill 2? Maybe like 2005 or something like that. But, uh, very long, lifelong uh, fan of Silent Hill. I'm here to pitch you a really bad Silent Hill game. Because as you know, we're entering a bit of like a Silent Hill renaissance after like a 
decade of like radio silence, yeah. if you will. And it's not and as if we don't have enough bad Silent Hill games already. We have plenty, right? Like more than half of them are kind of not good. Um, and like one of those games that was announced uh, is a Silent Hill 2 remake made by Bloober Team, the people that brought us a toddler running full force into a wall in a game that was not supposed to be funny. It was supposed huh? to be scary. What game is this? What did I miss the is that Layers the of Fear. Layers of Fear. Have you not seen the Germa clip? It's famous. No, I've heard <gasps> of Layers of Fear. Okay, a whoever, running into whoever, a wall? Whoever's editing this, play the clip of play the Germa clip. It's right now. me. You'll have to send it to me and I'll watch it. Alright, fine. Just know that tomorrow morning before school, you're going to be mad because you didn't take a bath. <laughs> so, that's who's remaking Silent Hill 2. Uh-oh. Um, and they're also just generally, like, distasteful when it comes to, like, mental health sensibilities of other countries. So, like, who knows what's going to happen there? But in an attempt to put myself in a mindset that's like, hey, it could be worse. Um, I'm gonna pitch you like the worst Silent Hill 2 remake possible. And like, for the record, a lot of these things I'm gonna list have actually shown up in other Silent Hill games over the years. So I don't know, should I start with like a plot summary? Do people know what happens in Silent Hill 2? I actually, I what year did Silent Hill 2 come out? 2001 or two. Okay, so One. I was four years old. So I never played Silent Ooh. Hill 2. Weeby. I, I never played, yeah, no, I guess so. Uh, uh, I've never played any Silent Hill game actually, partially because I am a coward. Um, mm. I only recently played my first Resident Evil, which is the original four. I played it before the remake came out. Oh, my cool. knowledge of Silent Hill uh, is limited to uh, I think the first two games are about sad dads and they go to creepy places and things go crazy, right? Uh, first one's about a sad dad, uh, okay. second one's about a sad husband. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I guess, spoiler alert for a 20 year old game there's a hill it's silent it's quiet um but y y you know uh, look out spoilers i'm gonna reduce it to two sentences the protagonist james is in a psychologically spooky town looking for his dead wife mary he's got amnesia though and plot twist he repressed the fact that he's the one who fucking killed his wife <laughs> oh my god that was like an indie game twist like 20 years before indie games right like that was the thing like when it came out in like 2001 everybody was like whoa the protagonist is bad yeah, i can't oh believe my God. it what like it was like crazy protagonists are only good dudes so yeah. you're playing this game thinking like wow poor guy and it's secretly he you know extremely killed his wife um he extremely killed her <laughs> so it's a, a lot more interesting stuff than that happens uh but let's just get into ruining this starting with uh the narrative because like let's be honest silent hill games are not like you're not in it for the gameplay you're probably playing it because it's spooky you're not yeah, playing because like, it's like action-packed and fun, fun to play. play so the og silent hill 2 has like six or seven alternate endings right, right. and it's I all do based know about on the like, dog ending i know about the yeah, dog little, ending. That's my <laughs> yeah you could have uh, new endings that have a, a character from another game show up. That has happened Crash in other Bandicoot Silent Hill games. baby! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Wow, well, that's better than what I wrote, but yeah. <laughs> Here's another thing that could fuck it up. Two weeks after release, the developer will come out and declare that one of these endings is canon. And it causes <laughs> all Silent Hill fans to spontaneously combust because yeah. you can't just do that. All of them are canon. It's like Schrodinger's ending. That's what people like about it. And it would be hilarious if Blue Routine came out and was like, this one. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, make Mary, your dead wife, deserve it more. <laughs> what if she fucking deserved it? Because... <laughs> Make, yeah, make her like awful and like soften up James so that he's far more sympathetic. And he's like a really great guy and, and husband who did not do that much wrong. And she was like just this nagging, horrible lady. Be and I totally can see Bloober Team doing this though. That one's like one of the more realistic things in this list. You're is validating because, like, wife, guys. <laughs> You're making a game about the first, mm, you know, the first morally <laughs> correct wife guy. It's so evil. Uh, how about dialogue trees? Which also that happened in a silent hill game and everybody was like what oh. uh but they changed the endings the dialogue trees so right. like there's certain ones that you could choose that will give you a fucked up weird ending totally randomly you can get like so you mentioned like the dog ending and stuff like that there's a couple joke endings that happen a lot in silent hill games like the ufo ending and the dog ending and they are all like new game plus things mm -hmm. Silent Hill Homecoming with its dialogue trees 
made it so that you could get the UFO ending on your first playthrough. And if you don't know the game has multiple endings, you're just going to get this crazy, whack-ass ending where people get abducted by aliens oh and be God. like, what was this game I just played? Yeah, imagine that so, being your first Silent Hill game and just ends like that. Oh, my God. I, I People have commented on stuff I've made be like, yeah, that was my first Silent Hill game. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. It was like really easy to get the joke ending. Gun to your so head. Like what's, a... what's your joke ending? What happens in your joke ending? What happens in my joke ending? Oh dear. Mm, I think we need a cat ending. Mm -hmm. Dog endings. There's no cat endings. Something to do with cats. Just a cat yeah. has been like controlling it by like with like a voodoo doll or something. Maybe like a cat comes in and like saves everybody <laughs> in a helicopter, <laughs> like lifts them out, like air lifts them away, brings them to <laughs> a hospital. Just a regular ass cat. <laughs> yeah, just a regular cat like driving a helicopter it brings you to a, a hospital to get better and staffed by cats too. You can um, have dialogue options with him, and you can re you can reject his help because you don't like cats. <laughs> it's just like three different meows, like <laughs> more text, less less subtext. Let's have overt Let's references. Overt references to fucked up dark topics. We don't need little, like, oh, it's implied that this really horrible thing happened. I want to know. I want to, you know, Salty, get out of my face. <laughs> Loud hill. <laughs> Loud hill, please. Yes. I want. Here's how you ruin this shit. Give Pyramid Head, who's like the man. You know that you know Pyramid Head, right? I, I'm, I'm aware of Pyramid Head, yeah. He's okay. like a manifestation of James's guilt, right? Yes! Yeah. Bingo! Ding, go. ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> and I think he's got a pachinko machine. He does, yes. <laughs> um, it's canon. That's how, he should, um, that's how he should enter. That's how he should invade James's life. He should, he should come falling down like this big slot. You know, I didn't put any pachinko stuff in here because it already happened. The worst <laughs> case scenario. There was a pachinko machine of this game. Satire is dead. Um, they could acknowledge an obscure fandom event in collectibles or audio logs or notes a thing that has really happened. Oh God. Silent Hill Book of Memories, the Vita game, uh, actually acknowledged like some hardcore fans that were huge dicks to all the developers and like referenced them in a note in the game. And it's like, are you stupid? That's a Why would you do that? Or like reference the, uh, oh, I wonder if you know about this. Uh, do you know about the, uh... Silent Hill Wiki circumcision meltdown guy. The, sorry, the what? Yeah, there was a mod on the fan run wiki uh, for Silent Hill that mm -hmm. went and uh, added his own headcanon stuff to the game pages. <laughs> and, a, and a fan of mine just like one day linked me a screenshot. It was just like, uh... I don't remember this part of the game. And it was like this whole rant about the antagonist of the fourth game, Walter Sullivan, how he was probably really, you know, damaged and serial killer and crazy because he'd been circumcised as a child. And, and there was a ton of unhinged conspiracy theory, real world <laughs> conspiracy theory stuff about doctors like gathering foreskins for dark rituals <laughs> in real life. And Silent Hill is a mirror into the real, and th the devs were making a point or something. This is insane. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is the ARG start of the next Silent Hill game. Now the yeah, villain is the Silent oh. Hill Wiki Circumcision Meltdown guy. I was the one that like broke the story of that. So have fun, like, look that up and There's enjoy all those, screen, all those screen caps of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and also, uh, last uh, narrative thing that I think they could fuck up. I think we need to add some uh, Joss Whedonisms. Oh I think my we gotta, god, um, he's right behind him, James. <laughs> yeah, I, he's right I behind that. me, isn't he? I James, you can that. hear he's him. Right. You can hear him dragging his sword from five miles away. Of course, he's behind you. He's, he's right behind me. <laughs> Uh, that just happened. Yeah. Like, they, they fly now. I'm thinking they fly now. Uh, you know, like, let's have some uh, extremely fragile, degradable weapons, but they're like <laughs> fucking everywhere. Like, it just <laughs> littered all over the place. Like, Silent Hill Origins, which did this, they're, they're everywhere. So yeah. your inventory is clogged up with these one use items, like a, like a portable television, a toaster oven, like all this stupid shit that you're finding all over the goddamn place. It's ridiculous. Pyramid heads chasing you. You're just throwing comic books at him. Yeah, like, just like darts. <laughs> emptying your pockets and just throwing things <laughs> yeah. at him. Block um, of cheese. Ooh, I'm thinking like, you know, in, in addition to quick time events, I think the cutscene where you find out that you killed your wife is an interactive quick time event where <laughs> You must do a sequence of like David Cage ass game button presses 
um, to smother your wife with a pillow, <laughs> but you can like mess it up over and over again and like have the animation reverse back and forth like as many times as you want. Um, they play it back to like a live action replay of your attempted murder. <laughs> uh, so that could happen. Let's see that Why again. Um, um, and by the way, Pyramid Head, even hotter. No shirt. Totally ripped. Bigger muscles. I'm I'm talking cum gutters. I'm talking cum <laughs> gutters. You never heard of this? This is a new one to me. Oh, of all the things the... I've had dumped on me today, cum gutters is the is the one that's <laughs> put my ears up the most. You're going to need to explain this to oh, me. Oh, I'm thrilled to inform. You're destroying my innocence. <laughs> I'm just a little baby boy. <laughs> just a little baby. Just a little oh. baby. A child. Cum gutters are the Adonis belt. Look it up. It is a, a, a series of muscles and tendons in the pelvic region uh, that become very prominent on men when they are bodybuilders or very, very cut in general. And instead of calling it the fancy name, which is the Adonis belt, which sounds very nice, very hot, people just call them cum gutters where I'm from. Uh, Can't wait. <laughs> That's getting the swiftest Google right after the Silent Hill wiki mm, circumcision, mm. man. Yeah, he's got the cum gutters. Uh, he's got a bit of a dick bulge. It has like painstakingly programmed jiggle physics on it. You know, just go completely hog wild if you Maybe will. Maybe he's got a little whale tail. Is this a new one for you? A whale tail? Oh, when... that's a, it's like a 2001 word. Oh my goodness. I guess so. That, when... That word... When someone's you wearing were. a thong and like the straps yeah. are kind of like extending up up past the thighs and you I, can see them. I was in I was in high school with a teacher with a whale tail when you were in kindergarten, wow. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, kindergarten doesn't exist over here, so not exactly. Oh, <laughs> primary school. Primary school. I was in primary school. Um, open world, but you can't go inside any of the buildings. <laughs> It's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet! Yeah, basically. Silent Hill did it first in Downpour. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's like driving and a mini map. I don't know. Fuck it. You can drive now. Uh, run over the, the monsters. Let's do a bowling mini game. Because there is a, a, a bowling alley you go to briefly. Let's make a whole mini game you out of that. You should be able to unwind section. a bit. You should be able to chill yeah. out. <laughs> Silent have chill. A pi have a pizza yeah. and bowl a little bit. Calm down. Your wife is not going anywhere. She's dead. Yeah. Like, you know, she'll be there. Okay, so your pitch for the Silent Hill 2 remake is a marvelized wife guy open world Silent Hill with dialogue yes. options and a cat ending. And a way too hot antagonist. And a way too sexy antagonist. Way well, too hot. If anything, this feels like a challenge to Konami, like modern Konami. Like, can you guys fuck this up more than this? Yeah, you know? like this is this is where I'm setting my bar so that I'm a little like okay with the blue routine version. Yeah. I'm gonna set this bar subterranean, but now I'm just gonna be disappointed that these funny things don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well the Lane Design Conference crowd are on their feet. They're going absolutely insane. It's it's actually quite distracting. I'd like them all to shut up while I give my pitch, but it's fine. So, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, the Lane Design Conference, it's a pleasure to be here again. Thank you very much for the for the raucous reception you've given me, as ever. Today we have uh, synced up our pitches somewhat unintentionally because we're both going for kind of a horror thing. Um, however, mine starts at a very different place. I may be a babby, but I am also a knowledgeable scholar on game history. I'm very aware of all the things that came before me. I'm very respectful of the things that came before me. And I think... Not Silent Hill, though. <laughs> no, I don't give a shit. I think <laughs> Crazy Taxi should come back. And I think Ooh. we all agree. Mm -mm. I think everyone's down with Crazy Taxi. However, in this modern post Dark Souls world, no one wants color or fun anymore. They want bleakness, they want Lovecraftian inspiration, and they want abstract concepts of death and decay. So I'd like to introduce to you all Incomprehensible Taxi. <laughs> the difference is that instead of being the taxi driver, you are a hitchhiker attempting to get a taxi ride. The problem is that you are a terrifying being of abstract darkness. You are some kind of menacing creature, maybe a nondescript figure of shadow underneath a long coat and a hat it with feels some like yellow a spin -off piercing of that eyes. One, that one movie, Under the Skin, was it? It's probably too old for me. Ah, it's, I think it came out like two years ago. Anyway. Probably too old for me, I don't give a shit. I, I only watched it for came out last week. I got that TikTok attention span. You are trying to catch a ride, and obviously, you are terrifying. So you are very unlikely to have success. The entire game is you effectively walking around in a big metropolis. I'm going to say, I played Sonic Adventure 2 back in the day, one of my favorite games of all time. City mm -hmm. Escape in that game is apparently based on downtown Los Angeles. It's yeah, got yeah. the trams and the slopes and stuff. I like San the Francisco. idea of a, 
San Francisco, that's it. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> California. My, my American no. geography is, no, 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 you know, no, 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 no. it's California, right? Um, um, I, I like the idea of a, a slopey city with a lot of trams, a lot of taxis going around, um, and a lot of the game will just be you walking around in this city. I think uh, a rain cloud follows you and the sky goes grey wherever you go. And <laughs> everywhere you go, it's a bit like you've just shot a cop in GTA. Everyone's running away. Oh. It's like it's like that meme, like when you're an anime fan, it's just someone walking towards crowds and they're all just dispersing near him. Uh, everyone is avoiding you all the time. Taxis don't want to pick you up. Almost the entire game is you walking around this city, everyone's terrified of you, and every car swerves to avoid you. It's just chaos wherever you go. However, once in a blue moon, and the game follows real time. It's a real, real life in time, like in game clock. So when it's daytime in real in real life, it's daytime in the game. When it's like nighttime in real Crossing. life, it's yeah, it, it, a lot like Animal. That was the first comparison I would make. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so obviously, when it's nighttime, there's less taxis around. But at the same time, there's slightly. Uh, I'm going to use a Britishism on you. A slightly dodgier taxi drivers who might be more amenable to picking up an abstract creature of horrific darkness. So maybe it's more optimal to play the game at night. I don't know. Thing oh, is, man. you're going to be used to walking around and never getting picked up or acknowledged by anyone or anything for so long that eventually, and it will happen, maybe once every real life week, a taxi will pick you up and you will get in. <laughs> And Where are we going? <laughs> well, that's it's incomprehensible. That's the thing, you know. So when you find okay, the average human reaction time, I might be wrong, but I believe it's seven frames or near enough. So mm. when you get in the taxi, a dialogue mini game will ensue, and you'll need to pick an option within six frames. Otherwise, <laughs> the mini game is cancelled and you're kicked out of the taxi. Well. <laughs> you have a bunch of options, things that are like retract tentacles dissipate black mist that surrounds you, dull red lights in your eyes, and one of them at random will work and allow the taxi driver to let you stay and drive Convincing you. enough, yes. Yes, and it's just, it's randomized. You have to pick one within less than six frames and just hope you get it right. If you get it wrong, you get kicked out, you go again, you wait another week for your six frame opportunity to get into a taxi. Um, if you get it, if you get it right, your taxi driver will take you to your destination. You asked where we're going uh, earlier. Technically, you do have a destination. Uh, your destination is that you're going to the taxi depot or the taxi rank, as we would call it in the UK, where there are more taxis because your destination is never ending. You're a Lovecraftian creature of madness. You don't know where you're going. Uh, and when if if you if you should pull off the second taxi ride successfully here at the, this next location, then it takes you back into the city and we loop and we go back again <laughs> I, I think it's a better idea to go at night when you're getting into a taxi with a taxi driver who probably intends to kill their passenger mm -hmm. but can't kill you because you're unkillable so you're both just kind of sat there and it's awkward like well, what do we do now you want to you want to you're an evil criminal I'm a creature of abstract darkness I guess we'll just you sit in fucking silence <laughs> you could, that's for the sequel yeah, there, that's like, what he lets like you drive. Um, and the final thing I have written down is that uh, perhaps the only extra feature this game has whatsoever is that you will be able to uh, pick different skins and uh, play as different characters. I imagine Sasquatch is a playable character. You can just walk around as a, as a Bigfoot-like creature. Um, mm. Maybe there's a general woman in white. You know, people hate women in white. God. Uh, yeah. And uh, maybe there's um, yeah, maybe there's just fucking Cthulhu. You know. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, going with the different skins, you could skin some people that you catch and just wear their skin and try to pass it off like, like you're a normal customer. customer. You could be a skin catcher, yeah. Mm. But that would that would that would change too much because then you'd be able to then there's like mechanics, you know. Then I'm there's like a stealth avoid, element to it, yeah. I'm not a big fan of this whole well, then mechanics becomes, things in my games. You know, I like a game where you just walk like around. prototype too. But those are fun. See, those are fun. I'm trying to avoid. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't like to put this. I don't like this mechanics malarkey. I think games have gone oh, too far. Yeah, right? I, I keep improving the idea. It's almost yeah. it's, it's approaching good. Don't listen mm -hmm. to me. <laughs> I like games where you just walk around and cars don't pick you up. <laughs> That's my gameplay loop, is you Just walk like around and are life. ignored. <laughs> um, so there you go. There is my pitch that is incomprehensible taxi. Mm. What do you think? That's pretty good. But I, it's like pretty, I, would, I, I hope it's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, like my pitch is just like depressing. Yours is is like more actively lame, though. I think mine mine's would be quite. Like, depressing, mine's like so like... bad. 
Mine's like so bad it might loop around and be like f good again. Like there's certain Silent Hill games where it's like so bad it's kind of good. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is stupid, but this is like a B movie to me now, you know? There you go. There's our pictures. <laughs> uh, there will be a straw poll link in the comments. As always, viewers, you have one week to vote on who had the absolute shittest game. Uh, and if our guest Void Burger wins this week, then she will be added to the Hall of Lame at the end of the following episode. Uh, don't do that. She's posturing for your affection. Don't do that. It will make me personally very upset. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please drop a sub, drop a like, do all the other shit that I hate asking for, but it's good for us. <laughs> Content makes Engage. me want to die. <laughs> yeah. Engage. Engage. Get invested in us as people. Uh, and we'll see you on the next episode. Oh, uh, Jess, where the, can the people find you? And do you have any shout outs oh. you'd like to give? Um... Shout out to the Mario movie being bad, um, but uh, enjoy it tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> Jess O'Brien, but are I... well and truly set. <laughs> maybe a like I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm Jess O'Brien. Uh, I go by Void Burger online, and you can find me on all all the things with Void Burger. You have a YouTube, uh, Twitch, you YouTube, stuff, you're active. yeah, Patreon, Twitter, all that stuff. Void, Void Burger, Burger and Check everything. It out. Basically, except the VOD channel I have, which is Void Burger Gaming on, on YouTube. Why is it not VOD Burger? I know, like I, I almost did, but then I was like, what if someone steals like the name other, well, I don't know. Mm. Not Too quirky enough, nowhere near quirky enough. Well, if you enjoyed the episode, we will see you very soon for another edition of the Lane Design Conference and the conclusion to this episode, we find out whether or not Void Burger goes into a Hall of Lame or not. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.